a story of grid-like burns. In this photo, a middle-aged man lies on a bed, his pajama top entirely unbuttoned, to reveal a disturbing rash of raised sores displayed in a grid-like pattern on his chest and stomach. The man in the photo is Stefan Michalak, and by his own telling, these strange burns on display in this photo are scars from his direct encounter with a UFO in the woods at Falcon Lake in Manitoba, Canada. The incident Michalak would later go on to describe occurred in May of 1967. After more than 50 years, it remains Canada's best documented UFO case. The Close Encounter. Stefan Michalak was an industrial mechanic by trade, but his primary interest was geology, and he would spend much of his free time exploring the rock formations of eastern Canada, prospecting for silver and quartz. On May 19th, Michalak checked into a small motel off the Trans-Canada Express, prepared for a weekend indulging in his passion project, mining the wilderness around Falcon Lake, a pristine and quiet locale about 60 miles east of Winnipeg in Manitoba's Whiteshell Provincial Park. The next day, the 51-year-old began prospecting near a vein of quartz along the Precambrian Shield at Falcon Lake when he was startled by a gaggle of nearby geese suddenly erupting in a cacophony of squawks. He looked up and saw two cigar-shaped objects with a reddish glow hovering about 150 feet away. According to Michalak, one of the disc-shaped crafts descended to the ground, landing on a flat section of rock. The other craft remained in the air for a few minutes before zipping away out of sight. Michalak, still hidden from view, observed the landed craft, even taking time to sketch its shape and appearance in his notebook. He then approached the craft, later recalling the warm air and smell of sulfur as he got closer. He thought he heard voices muffled by the sounds from the craft and shouted out to ask if help was needed. The voices went quiet and didn't answer, so Stefan then switched to his native Polish, then Russian, and finally German, but still no response. As he got closer, he noted the smooth metal of the ship, whose siding had no seams. He then looked into the bright doorway, making sure to put on the welding goggles he used to protect his eyes while chipping away at rocks during prospecting. He claimed to see light beams and panels of various colored flashing lights, but nothing else inside. Three panels then slid across the door opening and sealed it shut. He tried to touch the craft, which melted the fingertips of the glove he was wearing. He noticed a panel that contained a grid of small holes. Just then he was struck in the chest by a blast of air or gas that pushed him backward and set his shirt and cap on fire. He ripped away the burning garments as the craft lifted off and flew away. Michalak stumbled through the forest, feeling disoriented and nauseous. He eventually made his way back to his motel room at Falcon Lake and then caught a bus back to Winnipeg. In hospital, he was treated for burns to his chest and stomach that later turned into the raised sores in the hatched pattern shown in the photograph. For weeks thereafter, Michalak suffered from diarrhea, headaches, blackouts, and weight loss. The Aftermath and Investigation Once news of Michalak's UFO encounter broke, the Michalak's home in Winnipeg was overrun with officers of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the Air Force, the media, various government agencies, and hordes of gawking members of the public. The official conclusion by all government entities, including from the United States Air Force, was that the case was unexplainable. Items were later retrieved from the encounter site at Falcon Lake, including Stefan's glove and shirt, the latter of which was partially burnt and had a grid-like burn pattern on it. The cause of the burns was never ascertained. A circle about 15 feet in diameter was also found at the site, which was devoid of the moss and vegetation growing in other areas nearby. Soil samples, along with samples of clothing, were tested and found to be highly radioactive. Pieces of equally radioactive metal were chipped out of cracks in the rock about a year after the incident. The metal had somehow melted into the cracks. Again, this could not be explained. A Sun Recalls. In 2017, Michalak's son, Stan Michalak, released his book, When They Appeared, 
about the ongoing mystery regarding his father. In his book, Stan Michalak recalls when his father came home sick and injured after something had happened in those Manitoban woods on that long May weekend in 1967. It was an event that would shake the Michalak family for years thereafter. Michalak, who was nine years old at the time, would write, quote, I recalled seeing him in bed. He didn't look good at all. He looked pale, haggard. Then there was the smell that he can still vividly remember to this day. Quote, when I walked into the bedroom, there was a huge stink in the room, like a real horrible aroma of sulfur and burnt motor. It was all around, and it was coming out of his pores. It was bad, he writes. He cannot be sure to this day what his father saw that afternoon in May 1967. He does, however, state that as an aviation enthusiast, he knows that there was nothing being tested by the military at that time, which came close to having the capabilities of the craft his father witnessed. He also says that, quote, if Dad hoaxed this, remember we're talking about a blue-collar industrial mechanic, if he hoaxed it, then he was a freaking genius. The Legacy The saddest part of this story is that from the moment the story broke in 1967 to the day he died in 1999 at the age of 83, Stefan Michalak contended that he should never have said a thing about the UFO encounter. But his son believes that at the time, Stefan felt it was his duty to be honest about what happened. Stefan Michalak had been a military policeman in his native Poland and had a strong set of moral guidelines by which he lived. His personal ethos was that events should be reported as they happened and not embellished. The truth and nothing but the truth was his mantra. Interestingly, Stefan Michalak never claimed to have seen extraterrestrials in his story. All he did was retell his experience as it happened, a story which never changed a single iota during all those years after his fateful encounter at Falcon Lake. Mm -hmm.